The race for Senate kicked off in a big way last week. Two debates aired here on Fox 61. Here now with Hartford Current Capitol Bureau Chief Chris Keating, the author of the popular Capitol Watch blog. Uh, your thoughts? I managed to watch the first one, and I can't tell you I tuned in as thoroughly with the second one, but what's the scuttlebutt about uh, the debates? Well, the, the, the debates, it's, uh, it's almost a game of perception. Uh, in the Democratic debate, a lot of people thought uh, Merrick Alpert kind of pulled out as the victor. What I mean by that is um, he had a lot to gain and did gain a lot. Uh, a lot of people don't know him. He has not had television commercials, but he got on the stage with Blumenthal and handled his own. And uh, some people felt that, that he, quote, won the debate. That doesn't mean he's going to win the election, but he, quote, won the debate. Uh, in the Republican debate, same thing. Peter Schiff, not generally known to the general public, although investor he... Investor by trade, right? Investor money manager. Right? Yes, and very well known among his own core uh, group of supporters, mm -hmm. but not generally known to the public and has had no commercials. Some people think that Schiff won the debate. Let me uh, go back to that first debate. We see uh, Merrick Alpert here. Yes. Uh, what I did to him, I thought he scored some points. He came out throwing some haymakers. And, you know, uh, Blumenthal has always been sort of a calculating guy with how he answers his questions. I think what separated him from Alpert, from what I saw, that Alpert had some very strong, definitive opinions. And that sort of distinguished him from Blumenthal, who was, you know, pretty much the politician. So I, from what I saw there, I thought he acquitted himself well and that the Democrats obviously will probably still go with Blumenthal, but this guy, Alpert, is someone they need to find a place for somewhere. Seems yeah, like. Al Alpert's a smart guy. There's no doubt about it. Uh, he's basically doing this full-time right now. Uh, sharp guy, understands the issues, and uh, he doesn't really have anything to lose. Uh, he's way down in the polls. Mm -hmm. uh, Blumenthal's incredibly well-known. Blumenthal's been AG for 20 years, as you know. Incredibly well-known, incredibly high approval ratings. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't really go up, right. uh, and, he, and he didn't. He just stays like in jazz while Alpert's trying to throw haymakers, trying to connect, right? Correct. And, and, and basically, Alpert was trying to take it to him, asking him questions, mm -hmm. asking him whether, uh, how, many, uh, how his lawsuits created jobs, right. whether they did or they didn't. So he was bringing it to him, mm -hmm. uh, whereas Blumenthal, who's obviously the front runner in that race and the overall race, uh, didn't really have to uh, take it that way. Right. Now, speaking of haymakers, I think everyone was waiting on the Republican side for a little bit of a battle royal. You had the you know, WWE, uh, former CEO and president, Linda McMahon. You've got a former spy and Rob Simmons, former congressman and former CIA operative. And you mentioned the, uh, the money manager. They were kind of polite, it seems like. They didn't really uh, take the gloves off. At some point, you suspect the gloves got to come off there, right? Yeah, I would assume the gloves would come off. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. Um, uh, McMahon has kind of been on a campaign uh, brochure blitz, mm -hmm. uh, has been sending out a lot of mailings to a lot of people across Connecticut. Uh, she has not done television commercials taking on Simmons. So it's a little bit behind the scenes. It's got, a lot of it's going to Republican voters, but some independents are getting them in the mail, too. So uh, it's a bit of a nasty campaign going on, but it's a little bit behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. If she did television commercials and, and took it straight to Simmons, then it would be a different story and everybody would know about it. Um, so they... Uh, uh, they basically do not get along. Uh, I have not seen them patting themselves on the back uh, in any way, shape, or form. But yes, in, in general, the debate was kind of sedate mm -hmm. compared to what it could be. I suspect that will change. I think Simmons alluded to the character issue. You can see him already sort of foreshadowing. At some point, he's going to ask the voters out there, do you really want to put someone who runs pro wrestling into the seat uh, down in uh, Washington. I think that's what it's going to come down to. And then you have Schiff on the outside saying, listen, I'm the voice of reason. I told you all about this crash coming in here, and I've got the background to get us back on track. So you have different characters and personalities, and it'll be fascinating to see how that all plays out. Yeah, I would assume Simmons would raise the steroids issue. Uh, a lot of, an incredible number of uh, wrestlers under the age of 50 have died. Mm -hmm. uh, he will try to raise the steroids issue. Linda McMahon, who is no longer the CEO of, of WWE, has uh, defended herself on that. But I, I will get... sexual innuendo with some of the content is very sexually charged at times on that. So she's open Correct. to her, you know, she's saying, listen, it's a business, it's entertainment. This is what I do. And they're going to say, well, you know, to what degree does that blend into... Uh, her mindset and, and her character. So right, and we, we have not heard the last of that. We no. have not heard the last of wrestling. That will go all the way up till Election Day. To what degree now, you know, the Republicans worked so hard to get Chris Dodd out of there, you know, and they worked and they managed to get him to resign. Now you have Dick Blumenthal. What are you hearing from either side saying, gee, they got him out of there, but now was that a huge mistake? Didn't they have a better chance against a weakened Dodd than against a guy like Blumenthal, who maybe, who even didn't, who didn't perform well in the debate, but is still sort of this juggernaut? 
Yeah, yeah, the Republicans definitely had a better chance against Dodd in, in, in Dodd's weakened state. Um, Democrats that I've talked to are very happy that Blumenthal has, has got it, both Democrats who are going to be on the ballot and Democrats who are uh, working in the wings behind the scenes. So they're very happy that Blumenthal is there. Blumenthal has the lead in the polls. Uh, as I said, he's generally very well perceived in Connecticut. He's constantly on television, sometimes more than the TV anchors. He's constantly on TV, is as much as you, more than you. And um, the, the guy has been there, and uh, over the last 20 years, any Connecticut resident who turned on their TV at night, chances are they saw Dick Blumenthal. Right. Now, how about Kino? There's a good chance that down the road you'll hear more about Kino. Big debate brewing now, right? The governor wants to bring in Kino to help deal with this deficit. The uh, Indian casinos are saying, hold up, now we have this compact where we have the domain over Kino. Who's going to win that one? Right. The, uh, it could be a roll of the dice. I mean, uh, I'm, not, I'm not really, oh, I don't know special. how it's going to end up. Well, you know, you asked me, so I had to tell you. So, uh, I mean, uh, it, it could go either way. Yeah. I mean, if, it, if it's, if it's a ruled as a lottery game or right. if it's ruled as a casino game. If it's ruled as a lottery game, then REL wins. If it's ruled as a casino game, then the, the uh, tribes win, basically. Um, I have stake here reading your story, about $400 million to deal with the casinos. The state gets a 25% cut of the one-armed bandits, which Correct. totals about 370 to $400 million. So if they say, we're not paying you, you've got a big problem. 20 seconds? Yeah. No, who, that, that, who would be huge, that would be a huge problem. If it ended up in court, uh, it could drag on for years. I think everybody wants to avoid that. Um, a, a court case would not be good for the state. If the tribes withheld their payments, that would not be good for the state. There's a lot of bad things that could happen. It's a roll of the dice. There you go. <laughs> all right, thanks to all our guests. No doubt. Chris Keating. Chris Palmer, James Walker, an entertainment attorney. Oh, we said James Walker. You can send your show comments or requests, or you can watch us again at ctnow.com and friend us on Facebook. Become a fan of the Stan Simpson Show. We're on Twitter, too. So look out for our tweets. Lori Perez and The Real Story are next for the good folks here at Fox 61. I'm Stan Simpson. We'll see you next week. Thank you.